Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Raichu plays here. In the last episode, we created the Largibbon Islands, which was a pretty cool build. Really enjoyed building this one. Um, but in today's video, we are going to be filling out this space here. Um, I've still not decided what to put here. I know I said in the last episode I could build something here for potentially like a hoofstock animal or something, but I think I'm just going to put some kind of plants in this area because I think it's going to be a little bit of a nightmare to get it sorted and I'd probably have to fence off here so it doesn't swim over to here or swim elsewhere. Um, so we are going to do sand cats in here. Um, another thing I did forget as well was the Binturong and the Asian small claw otters that we did here. So them two, this area here is complete now. Another thing which I would like to do is make an actual staff area for this because I want the people that work on this side to have different coloured uniforms to the standard. Um, obviously this is still included in the zoo which doesn't have an official name just yet. So what we're going to do is we are going to stick with the standard style we have around. Um, probably just going to be like European stone and all that kind of stuff. So let's hop straight into it and let's get creating the habitat for the sand cats. Okay, so I've put a little basis down for the kind of backstage forward slash viewing area. Um, I am going to cut this off here and make it like a private bit and then make this just somewhere where the staff can prepare stuff and then this will be open. Um, what I am going to do as well is I'm going to have like a glass overpass into the outdoor area. Um, they are only small animals so we're just going to have, I think it's only two you can keep together. So let me just check that because I'm sure it's... Yeah, so it's one of each, um, so we'll do that. They've got plenty of space here. They can't share their habitat with anyone else, actually, so probably got more than enough space here, but we'll make it work. We'll do some pretty cool trees and do some kind of like glass barriers and stuff. Um, so for the kind of style I was thinking, is I was just thinking of doing... Let me just grab the glass piece that I want. So I just want to use the modern glass pieces, which is these ones. So just turning off random rotation and we'll align them to the surface. I'll just click out of it and click back. So for some reason it's still still not going to the angle that I want it. Or I can just do that and pretty much move it into position how I want it. Um, just do that one more. And if I just take that into the middle like that, what I can do is I can literally just kind of copy and paste it all the way over like that. Um, I am going to delete one of these because this is where we're going to have the kind of overpass. So obviously that one would typically be a little bit lower than the others. Um, so on top of here, I am just going to delete that, just add one of these walls and Obviously the back is going to be different, so we're not going to, we won't do that. Um, I am just going to add one here. And then I'm thinking potentially like that, just so they've got something they can kind of climb into. Um, so I'll do like a little climbing bit here, and then this will just be like their sleeping quarters as such. Um, and I think for this one, I'm thinking of taking it down to roughly about there, I think. Because I want kind of glass overhang. Let me just see if we've got any others. So I want to be using the modern glass. I think if I use, yeah, I think if I use that one. So I've never actually built an overpass before, so this is. First time it's ever I've ever done it. But pretty much what we will be doing is just pretty much copy and pasting these uh, all the way over. Just to about there I think. And then I'm gonna select all of them. And I'm literally just gonna control an X. And then they should slot very nicely into position. Just need a little bit of altering, but it's not too bad. I'm just going to see if there's any thinner ones actually. That might be a little bit better. 
yeah, let's look, I'm going to use them at the side. Because I prefer them. And I can potentially get it a little bit better if I do something like that, I think. So it's just all trial and error because I've never, never made one of these before. So it's more on the outside. So if I move it to about there, that should be okay. And then for the top, I think if I just copy Control X those like that, that should be plenty of space, I think. Just to kind of do it like that, I think. Something like that. Okay, so I think to just kind of patch up these bits here, um, I've had to use the one meter by two meter. Um, I don't think it goes the best, so I might just potentially cover that with um, like the European stone if I can use like a thinner piece or something. Um, potentially something something like that or if we've got anything let's just see what this looks like uh, if we flip it it doesn't matter which way you do this but let's go that way for now um, could yeah I could potentially use that actually just get it as lined up as best as I can have to sink that behind just a little bit like that that's fine I can uh, that's not gonna work for some reason I don't know why but let's just get that in as best as I can mm, yep that works for me uh, what I can do here then is I can actually delete these pieces of glass out as well um, like that I think and then I think on this side which I might just need to split that from the group and I think if I just make that about that height that should be all okay and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hop back into the group across the road as such we'll call it that and I'm going to use that and it's just going to be a case of following this all the way around okay so just to make the outline as well um, obviously the path isn't the most accurate as such but I'm not too worried about it and um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to angle it very very slightly and then I am just going to kind of use that same angle which I got to here um, or maybe I'll just go one more out actually yeah, let's go one more out we just control D that and like I say it's not, not the neatest but we can we can kind of tidy up a little bit and um, we're going to scrap all of that so we're going to use this grid. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that to there like that, and then I am just going to split these from the group. So just to make it easier, what I can do is I can just kind of maneuver them to where I need them. Kind of go to there, I think, and then put into this group and I'll split that selection as well. Let's turn angle snap on. Off, sorry. And then we can get that corner just right like that. 
something like that. We can then also split this and pull it all the way back to about there. So this will make up their outdoor arena as such, we'll call it the arena uh, or outdoor enclosure, whatever you fancy. And then it's pretty much just going to be the same. So there's going to be glass all around. Um, obviously this bit, I'm going to probably add some details like a hot wire or something just to give it a little bit of, um, like I say, we never really go for realism, but just to give it a little bit more of a realistic effect. Um, I am also going to pop these to there as well. Um, I could also do the overhangs here to be fair, but I don't know if we will. Um, just leave that for now. And then what I did want to do as well, just so I don't get too ahead of myself, uh, let's get the angry archer. And yeah, there's plenty of space for the guests to walk through. And obviously they can see over, because it's quite a, I wouldn't say it's a high wall. I would imagine in real life it's probably quite small. But obviously Planet Zoo's measurement is probably a little bit different. So thinking pretty much just copy this all the way over to where, where it was on the other one, just like that. So then you've got this kind of like glass element and I'm thinking of just doing like a log or something to connect to here. Or maybe in these bits I should fill them up with wall I think. Thinking maybe if I go to there and possibly to there. Um, I will just have to split them from the group though because the tiny little bit of Z fighting but it's just this one I think. Split that from the group. I'll just sink it forward ever so slightly. And then I can just bring it up to where where I need it. So I think before I do anything else, I am gonna grab the logs because I think I want to use the big log like this. But come to terms with it, I don't know if it's gonna be a little bit too big. But even if it is, it's not not the end of the world. Um, oh, because I can kind of just like move it to kind of where I need it. Um, so let's just kind of get it sunk into position. So I'm thinking possibly something stops moving. I'm thinking maybe something like that, but obviously I need to get it so that bit ever so slightly sits outside of the wall. So you can't see it from from either side. Um, so let's just get that like that. And I think that works pretty well to be fair. Um, obviously the keepers won't be able to access this part so we'll only add enrichment items over here and anything feeding related and water will be over this side. Um, but yeah that is pretty much what I wanted to do. Um, I did want to add some kind of columns on every now and then but I don't know if we've got any in the European uh, stone packs. So let me have a look. So I could do with something like that just a little bit thicker, but we haven't got I haven't really got anything that I could use. Just need something kind of like um, a pillar as such. Uh, let's see what we've got. Let's see if we've got anything in the in the breeze blocks. Yeah, something like that, but Maybe not as not as thin. I could do with something a little bit thicker. Uh, they're all about the same. I'll turn that position snap off as well. Let's just have a look. So I'm just going to sink these down very, very slightly. And then I think if I add one around halfway. 
That's quite a good guesstimate, but... Or well, maybe there, actually, that's probably more... More of the halfway point, I think. And then this one, I should... Oh, scrap that. Oh, I will redo that because I need that. I will just move it out to roughly the halfway point, which is about there. And then if I go to the same. So I should have really done this at the start, to be quite honest, because it would have made my life a lot easier. I exit out of the group and just use that one as almost like a placeholder. Just make sure I'm grabbing the right axis. So there, I think, like that. And then I think if I line it up that way, I should have some more freedom with it. So there, and then we'll add one on the end as well. Something can go into there like that. And if I rotate just a little bit more. So roughly there. I know these aren't 100% straight, but obviously I'm just trying to align them as best as I can. And then I can just kind of slot that one uh, into place like that. So that pretty much gives me the space that I need. Um, I don't know why it keeps doing this where it like as if like random rotation is on but it's not so I don't know if anyone knows a fix for that please please do tell me because it drives me crazy um, I don't know if it's because I'm out of the group or or maybe if I oh. thinking maybe if I do that all the way around it's probably going to be easier and less of a headache. Because then I don't actually have to um, don't have to align it as much. I can just more kind of like eyeball it better. Um, I'll leave that bit for now. And I'll come back to that. It's towards the end, just because I'm going to need um, kind of like a smaller piece. And then for these bits, I can literally just control an X all the way over. Just make sure that them two are together. Um, I also don't think the sand cat is particularly dangerous, but so I wouldn't really want to, um, to kind of find out. So we'll... Um, Proceed with caution, I guess. Okay, that's fine, so that doesn't stick out too much, which is good. So like that, I'm thinking, and then pretty much the same. So what I am going to do is I'm just going to kind of align both of them just so I know roughly where they are. This is probably going to take a lot of, um, a lot of editing towards the end. Absolutely, because it's very out of line. 
So let's get that properly in. And I can make that taller, just like that. So I wanted it to feel quite classic, I think, with the, the kind of approach I've gone with this. Um, obviously I didn't want it to be too modern like the, um, the La Gibbon bit we did. But I think the kind of style I've got now is... I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's um, definitely what I was looking for. Um, and obviously here, that's pretty much the outdoor area complete. Um, the only bit I wish... Let me just see if I can kind of amend. I might have to do something here with this path, but I'm hoping to turn the length all the, all the way down. I'm hoping I can... Um, maybe to there, I think. Just so it makes it look like it fits in a little bit better. Um, can't really do much with this bit, so I could just put some some grass or something there. Um, with regards to this bit, what I am going to do is I'm going to find the smaller pieces, and I will potentially use that piece if I can. Just a little bit short. Uh, have we got anything else? We don't have a free meter, which is annoying. Um, I guess I could... I could do that. And then I could use one of these. And just kind of slot it into place like that, I think. I mean, that works for me. I'm quite happy with that. And then I can just kind of move it around. So that pretty much gives me what, what I am looking for. Um, one thing I do need to add is the kind of hot wiring around this bit. Um, I don't think we have any, any wire props. Um, so I I think what I used before, it was a certain type of fencing, but let me just double check which one it was. Might, yeah it was these. So these are the bits that I used before. Just find which, uh, which setting it was I used before. Scrap that. like that and I think if I do something like this so I just want to kind of mimic like hot wires that you find at the zoo because um, obviously this is quite a quite a dangerous bit where they could potentially jump out so obviously we want to avoid that at all costs. So just going to use angle snap all the way around. Um, I will join that to around there. And then it's pretty much just the case of going all the way to the end. Like obviously I can't really imagine them trying to jump over this way, but obviously cats being cats, they can be adventurous or the, I guess it's whichever whichever kind of way you want to want to look at it um, so if they try and jump up there they've got the the hot wire to kind of stop them um, I won't do it on this side because we are going to enclose this this building off because it's going to be an indoors bit um, so yeah that's pretty much the hot wire I am half tempted to to kind of bring it down this way as well I think it may be to there all the way over and then just kind of match it up as best as I can and um, might just have to bring these two down just a tiny little bit just to there like that and then that 
that pretty much works for me. I'm quite happy with that. I was thinking as well to do like an, an A3 kind of thing, but I don't really think they need it. And I'm not really going to put a load of time into something if they don't actually need need that kind of thing. Um, so I'm just going to pop a little pond in as well. I feel like this probably would have been better for a lynx, but we're not we're not going to do the lynx because it's probably too small for a lynx now. And um, we are going to stick with the with the sand cap because I do prefer the sand cap. So I'm just going to pop the barriers in now. So again, using the the little trick that I always use, I just use the plus and minus on the keyboard. Um, I don't know if you can do this on console yet, but I'm sure there is some. There is a shortcut menu where you can find out what the what the options would be if there is any. Obviously I don't want to say there is just in case there isn't. Um, I haven't actually played console so I'm not familiar with the controls. Um, but I can't imagine there not being anything if that makes sense. Um, and what I will need to do as well is just go straight over here. And I'll just kind of grab that. Uh, I'm just going to use the shortened bit here just so I've got more control over it. And then hopefully that stretches, there we go, all the way to the end. And then press in minus again to about there. And then minus again and then straight over. So I am hoping that I can put one of the barriers. Just in here. So I'm hoping that sits nicely. Uh, not the best, but it will have to do. And then I'm just going to use just a little piece of wood if I can just find potentially the first light coloured plank that I see. Um, that's kind of semi straight or fully straight, I don't mind. Um, something like this, I think that'll do. It's just to sit under here like that. Just to give the illusion that the door is completely flush. Um, what I can do as well, if I really, really need to, is I can just move these like that. And then I think that works a little bit better. Um, so let me see if I can just connect this um, this path up to something. Um, I feel like it's going to snap at some point. So it's going to snap there, that's fine. And then just around the edge here, I am going to use the same stained wood pieces that I used previously. I don't know if it was called stained or... Yeah, it was the stained one. And then we're going to use a lighter colour, I think. And I'm going to have to use the 2 metre and the 1 metre together because we don't have a 3 metre piece. But it's fine. It would be a lot better if we had 3 metre pieces, but obviously... There's probably some some reason we don't. So ideally I need to put the sand cats in just to make sure that the, the little overpass works and stuff. Um obviously first I do need to put some some form of climbing in here. So if I just go to Habitat and filter down onto Species Sandcat, if I can find them. There we go, Sandcat. I can use any of these as such, so I'm probably going to use this ramp. Because I do quite like this ramp. And then I'm probably... Oh, I'll just turn the line to surface before it goes crazy. And then I'm probably going to use that. Like that, I think. So about there. Um, I don't know if they'll be able to walk over the glass, but I can definitely give that give that a whirl and see if they can. 
Um, I can't see why they can't. They should just be able to walk straight over it, I would have thought. But if not, I can add I can add a couple of the sticks or something. Just to make it just to push it through. Um oh, while I'm here as well, I did manage to get Bertie the cow, a new friend. So I managed to get the morph that I wanted. So if we just unpause that, because we had a couple of names in one of the premieres, and I think we're gonna go with Morphe. So spelt as in like M-O-R-P-H-E-E, -E, I think. Um, I think that works quite well. Gives him a little bit of a friend. Hopefully we get some cattle. I'm pretty sure that one is, yeah, female. I'll say it's not going to work if it's two males. Um, obviously the goat pen is a little bit under control now because I've put them all on contraceptives. And we did have a name for the piebald. Um, so I will just have to double check who it was who named that. But somebody in the comments did leave the suggestion as Chester. Um, whilst I'm going around I will obviously check that and just make sure that that is the correct name because I'm sure somebody dropped Chester as a suggestion. So let me just have a quick look through. Uh, yep, yeah, so it was Erin Jackson. She suggested the name of Chester. So Erin, this is named after you. And he's pretty happy. He's at 100% welfare, which is good. So let's just do a quick little zoom in of Chester for you. And we've also had another one as well. Oh, oh god, they're all... There we go, so this is Chester. Then we do also have two more baby donkeys which we'll need. Just make sure one of them isn't a Schwalski's horse. Oh, that one's a Schwalski's horse. So we've got one baby Schwalski's horse and one baby donkey that also need naming. So, as always, drop them down below and I will name them in a future one. So going back to the topic, so I go off track a little bit. Um, we were looking at sand cats, and I'll just give away a little spoiler for potentially what's coming next. So let's just find the best ones that we can. I think that one will do. And hopefully we can find a pretty decent male. We'll go with that one. Just make sure it doesn't pull through uh, an even better one now. Uh, so let's just kind of pop them in. Mm, say an invalid destination, I don't know why. Maybe it's something to do with the barrier actually. I think it's because I've got these. It's because I've done it like that. And I've not even completed this bit, so that would make perfect sense why it's not working. So yeah, note to self, always make sure the barriers are complete. Before questioning it, because I've so questioned myself then. Uh, so let's get the two sand cuts in. Uh, still saying invalid, but I don't know why. Let's do a little sweep around and see which bit. So that's done to there, that's there. Maybe it's something to do with that bit. There we go, that's fine, that's working now. Uh, apparently not. Still saying it's incomplete, is it this bit here? Jesus Christ, that was literally the struggle boss. Wow, okay, that's sorted. So let me <laughs> let me name that Sandcats. I made that so much more difficult than it needed to be, but we love the chaos, so we'll carry on. And pop them to him. There we go. So I am gonna speed up time. Just so they do get a little bit of a wriggle on and come quite quick with the with the sand cats. We should see them running down here somewhere. Oh here they are. Oh they run through the tortoise house. Um so I'm just gonna check the traversable areas and stuff just to make sure that they can actually traverse everywhere that I've built for them. So let me have a look. 
Yeah, so looking at this, I don't think they can go over. So it's not a problem. We can just use the thin kind of pole. Uh, I don't know why that's doing that. Something along them lines, I just need it to sit just above, maybe about there, I think. And then I might just use two meters at the end, and I'll use one meter just to get it onto onto this bit. Okay, just like that. So let's just check that they can hopefully now access the other side. There we go. So that is pretty much how you have to do the overpasses. You have to kind of have something there because they won't walk on the glass for some weird reason. Um, so I'm hoping they're going to go over that now. Just want to make sure it all works as expected. Oh, yep. Yeah. There we go. So both of them are going over. I think that's quite a good view for the guests as well. Because um, obviously they can just kind of wander and they can perch on here. You can watch them from here. Obviously you can see them crossing over as well, which is pretty cool. Want to see if they can actually make it down. Oh. Yeah, so it tells me this one is a little bit broken with <laughs> with the uh, animations when it goes up there. This one's fine. Oh, Jesus. Oh, where's it gone? Uh, oh, okay. Hello. Yeah, I don't think he's quite got to grips with the uh, traversable area, but that's fine. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I am just going to finish the back door area, uh, back door, backstage, sorry, backstage area, and then I'll just put a roof on it, and then we'll come back and we'll decorate this bit. Um, obviously, this bit's just going to be bedding and probably some little climbing frames and stuff, but I will get this done, and then I will pop back at the end, and then we'll just kind of see where we are. I will pop it in speed build just so you can see what I'm doing. So I will catch you shortly.
Okay, so I'm pretty happy with what I've got so far, actually, to be fair. Um, I didn't want to kind of overdo it. I thought what we've got is pretty pretty decent so far. Obviously, added a couple of kind of big trees, but these are enrichment items. Um, added loads of other enrichment items. We've got the little burrow as well. Um, I don't know if anyone's... Oh, yeah, they're both in here. Um, so they like sleeping in burrows, which is good. So this little area I built over here is redundant, but it is what it is. Um, I guess we can just use this as like a section in bit. I could potentially add like um, a little piece on here which kind of slides over if we need to separate them. But like I say, we probably shouldn't need to. Um, obviously we've got the the kind of hot wire around here. So obviously they can kind of still walk up and over. Um, they won't be able to jump because they've got nothing to kind of grip on and it is just glass there. Um, but yeah, the inside bit turned out quite cool as well. Um, I do quite like this. The keeper can still, hopefully, yeah, the keeper can still access all the stuff he needs. So we've got the water and the food here. So I did put the food embedded in this rock here so the guests can kind of stand and watch. Um, obviously this bit here is just going to be kind of like padded out with rocks and stuff. We're just going to make this central area just look a little bit deserty. Um, just had a few rocks and stuff. I think that would work pretty well. Um, Obviously, I don't think we're going to see these often, but I did just add some little bits of grass. Um, well, yeah, that's pretty much it, to be fair. I'm um, pretty happy with what we've got. I don't know why they're running running away, because I don't actually think the sand cat is dangerous. I don't know. Let me put that to the test. Let me just see if people... Are scared of the sand cats. You are having a laugh. Fleeing from the sand cat. It's literally the smallest little thing ever. I don't know if there's any way to. I bet you anybody they bolt through this. Off they go. Right, okay. Let me pause that because I need to find a fix for this. Um, just save it where I'm at at the minute. Right, okay. Let me just see if there's anything in the sandbox. Uh, enable guest fleeing. We'll get rid of that. Because we really don't need that. Right, come back. People who run away from the sand cats. Let's just see if that works. Oh, well, there we go. They're still fleeting, so I don't know what all that's about. Hmm. I don't know. Let's see if I put them there, if they'll flee as well. Uh, no, they seem to be okay. Let's see if these people will walk through and not flee from the animals. Once they figure out it's a tiny little cat. Come on. I'm just going to have to move here. Exploring. Oh no, so that, it seems to be okay now. Maybe it was just that setting. Um, you won't be able to do this in sandbox mode because the game will throw a paddy and tell you that animals are chasing people or something. I don't know. Seems a little bit weird, but I guess it is what it is. There's obviously a reason for them fleeing sand cats. I don't really understand why you would flee a sand cat because it's the smallest little thing. I think it would probably scratch you at least. Uh, I don't think a bite from one of these guys. It looks kind of like a domestic cat. Obviously, I know it's got wild instincts and stuff, but is it really that dangerous to run away from it? I uh, don't know. So, yeah, off camera, we'll kind of spruce this area up. I'm not just going to add rocks. Um, we'll just kind of do that off, off camera. But that is pretty much the sand cats. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, what I did want to do before I go is I did want to create the uniforms and stuff. So I wanted to create the work zones, but I don't want them to be too kind of... I don't want them to be too overcomplicated, if that makes sense. 
So I'm just going to keep it as, as that because I've not got anything, anything else in here. Uh, so I'm just going to call it Zoo. So obviously it's not part of the farm. And then... And again saying this, I don't even know if I can... No, that's not going to work. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing work zones. We'll scrap that. We'll save that for a franchise, um, <laughs> a franchise episode if we ever get around to doing franchise. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy with how this area is actually turning out now. Um, obviously, these here, like I said in a couple of episodes ago, I'm taking inspiration from peak wildlife for these areas. So this is going to be a walkthrough penguin area and this is going to be a walkthrough wallaby area. So at peak wildlife in Derbyshire, Staffordshire, I think it's on the border, it's one of the two. Um, they have all three kind of interconnected by a single airlock gate. So we'll add another airlock just to get into all of these similar to down here. I can probably close this one off after to be fair. Make it so you have to physically go into the zoo or this could just be a bypass actually. Um, but I think in the next episode, I'm going to come down to this bit here. Um, I've also still got all this stuff over here, so I was hiding all this. I was hid hiding the bouncy castle for a while because I'd not put that yet. Um, I do still need to put that on to the steam workshop, so I will do that at some point. Um, but this is just for when I did the initial review content for Frontier of the pack, so I just left it all here just so it was easier. But what I am going to do here is I am going to do a European fallow deer forest. Just have like a little path and then just have it very dense, have a couple of shelters at the back and potentially a viewing dome in the middle actually but I'm going to make it really quite um, quite forestry and stuff because obviously European fallow deers they like woodlands and stuff. Um, but yeah I'm still still on the hunt for looking for them in real life. I found um, captive ones at a house that I went to um, they had red deers in European fallows, um, but the only wild deer that I have seen local to my area is the muntjac deer. And it's not meant to be here, but it's probably one of my favourite like species of deer. It's quite a cool one. Um, they're very loud. I think you hear a muntjac before you see them. Um, we actually saw them last night barking and doing whatever they do. But yeah, I still need to get some good photos of them to be fair. Still getting to grips with my new camera. Um, also apologise about the delay on videos the past two weeks. I have got back from Fort Park now. Um, I know I said in the last video that the ride we went for was going to be open. But as soon as we stepped through the gates, it broke. Surprise, surprise. And it was broke for both days we was there. So they have activated a pass for us to go back for another two days for free, which is really, really good. So we're going to give it plenty of time and I think we're just going to go back in September time. Um, I think when all the school holidays are finished, it should be nice and quiet in September. So we're just going to rebook the little hotel we stayed in on site and then use the free tickets that we've got and just have, have another two days out and get whipped around and thrown around like crazy again, which should be fun. So I think I'm going to wrap this one up here. It's going to be a little bit shorter than usual but obviously the last couple of ones were a little bit long so I'll keep this one short and sweet and um, we will be heading off down let me just do the path while I'm thinking about it I'm going to change up the path a little bit here so I want it to start potentially there and then I kind of want it to follow the woodlands because we're going to have some aviaries in here um, but it's going to go kind of like down this way and then this is going to be like the viewing area and then it's going to actually run the wrong angle. Uh, so here we're also going to have Avery's here. And then probably to about there is going to be the viewing area for, for the European fallow deers. Um, I might also do like red deers here as well, but we're just kind of making our way along. Um, Obviously the Avery's we are just going to be doing manual ones like we did in the Arctic Adventure. And don't worry, I haven't forgot about that series. It is still on my list. I'm just kind of into this one at the minute and I feel like I've got my creativity <laughs> at 100% on this. So yeah, if you have enjoyed this one, drop a like. Obviously any comments for the, sorry, names for the two Sankats, so comment them. 
and I'll get them named in the next one. If you are enjoying the series so far, please consider subscribing, it's really appreciated. And in the next episode I will show you once all this area is complete, so I need to kind of put some rocks and flowers and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, and I will catch you on the next one.